Dr. Gershner, there are so many different interpretations of the Bible. How can I know whether yours or anyone else's is correct? Well, the question as I hear the, the gentleman posing it, Dr. Gershner, is uh, with all the myriad number of, of variant interpretations of Scripture, how do you know that your interpretation of Scripture is the right one? Is that, is that the way you say it? That's the correct. Well, the first thing I'd like to say, Dr. Sproul, and a friend from the audience there, is that there aren't that many varying interpretations. As you know, for 30 years I taught church history, and I would say this, that in the whole history of the church, as far as church polity is concerned, there's only three forms. As far as theology is concerned, there are only three forms, what we call the Reformed and the Arminian and the uh, liberal interpretation. So. There's a great deal of agreement, fundamentally, on what the Bible says. Where do we get this notion that there's all sorts of, uh, or, oh, I admit, around the edges, the peripheral detail, but not in the essential message? Uh, but, Dr. Gershner, there's 2,000 different denominations in the United States of America alone, all claiming the Bible is their authority and is their source. But somebody's getting confused. It may be on the edges. But what, what we want to get down to is when it gets down to that essential message, what, you, what I hear you saying is that there's at least three significant different understandings of the essential message. I didn't mean to give that impression that there's three uh, differences of the essential message. See, the Christian church agrees today on the Apostles' Creed. That's been a universal affirmation of Eastern Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism, and all varieties of uh, Protestantism. As far as the core doctrines of God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, and life through the forgiveness of sins by Jesus Christ, and so on. Now, you mentioned the thousands of uh, denominations there have been, but they, that's because people, unfortunately, and I think contrary to the teaching of Scripture, tend to uh, start a new denomination with a drop of a hat. That's the most casual thing many people think they could do. Not that the Bible teaches that many varieties of opinion that would justify separate organizations, but that the basic message of the Bible is essentially the same, and it's quite clear to most people. Well, Dr. Gerstner, how do you know, besides that, that, that your understanding of that quite clear message, which at least would, grant, would be radically different from a liberal, uh -huh. how do you know well, yours is right? All right, with respect to, take the liberal in the thoroughgoing sense of liberal here. That's used uh, liberally, that term, very frequently, and it doesn't mean what I mean. I'm thinking of liberal here as a person who denies the very thing we've been talking about, the miraculous, the virgin birth of Christ, the resurrection, and all the other uh, inspiration of the Bible, and so on. Now, persons like that, down through the history of the church, have been called Pelagians and Socinians and modernists and liberals and so on, and I'm saying about that view, it has no right to existence, and the whole Christian church, which holds those other two theologies, okay, hold, hold is against it. Right there, hold it right there. I don't want to interrupt you. Okay, you are saying <laughs> yeah. that they have no right to their yeah, existence, yeah, and right, they are right. saying you have no right to yours, Gerstner. Oh, no, and the whole point is, how can you say it? How do you know that your judgment of what the essence of Christianity is is the correct one rather than the liberal one? The interesting thing is it isn't any monopoly of mine. This is what the whole consensus of the Christian church does maintain. And liberals, you know, Francis Lindy Patton of Princeton Seminary once said, liberals fly at a low level of visibility, which is a way of saying they only pass as Christians because they sound as if they believe differently than they actually do. When liberalism is recognized, anti-supernaturalism, the whole Christian church joins together back to back and shoulder to shoulder and says, you are not Christian people. You do not believe what's essential to the Christian religion. What are those essentials? Those, as I say, there, there are three theologies which have appeared. That one has no right to have appeared. And when it comes in its own colors, it's recognized and repudiated. The two, speaking theologically, are what we call well, the semi-Pelagianism of the early church and uh, uh, Arminianism today, Evangelicalism, I was against Reformed and Calvinism. Those are the only two basic theologies which the Christian church has come up with in 2,000 years of biblical okay, development. Okay, well, I appreciate the lesson in church history. <laughs> But I'm asking now, but the question I'm asking, and I believe this man is asking out here, is not a question of church history and what the consensus of the church has been, but how do you know when you interpret the Bible that your interpretation of the Bible, is what, what, or maybe what I'm hearing you saying implicitly is you look at the tradition of the church and then what the consensus of the church has been for 2,000 years. That's the authoritative guide that determines you for you how to interpret the Bible correctly. Is that a fair assessment of your position? It's a fair assessment of what I've said so far, but it's not what I mean. I would actually say that uh, when a person looks at the Bible without any prejudices against its supernaturalism and so on, he comes out with one of two theologies, not dozens and dozens of them, actually. In other words, what we call the perspicuity of Scripture or the see-throughableness of Scripture. Scripture is a book which was written by God, as we have said, 
not to hide his will from us, but to reveal it. So it stands to reason that if we are honest and will tremble before God's word and will, as Christ said, let the word of God have free course in us, we will see what it says. And the testimony of the Christian churches for 2,000 years has been a fundamental agreement. Okay, I, I know that. And again, we're back in the history lesson. And I, and I grant that, yes, there are certain things held in common by Roman Catholics, Lutherans, Baptists, uh, Episcopalians, and so on. But let's get to those fringe points. Right. At those fringe right. points, you do disagree with right. Baptists, you disagree with uh, Lutherans and other people like that. How do you know you're right? Well, before I say how I know I'm right, let's say with respect to the Baptists, since you mentioned them. Yes, I disagree with them. That's, That's dangerous fine. ground, incidentally, because we're in a Baptist church here tonight. Uh, you protect me after their... But I, I disagree with the Baptists at about 5% of their theology. And 95% of that theology. Well, there agreement. comes their choral music again, and so we're going to have to... And we can't ourselves. wait now to hear what that 5% is. <laughs> I wonder if anybody can guess what the 5% is, with which I don't agree. <laughs> but there really is. That, that's a fundamental uh, uh, doctrine, of course, where we pedo-baptists, that is, those who baptize infants, on the basis of their relationship to believing parents and so on, differ with our Baptist brothers and sisters who believe in what's called believers' uh, uh, baptism. That's the most basic difference. Now, it is perfectly true in the history of the Baptist movement that there were particular Baptists who are Reformed, and there were what we called General Baptists who are Arminian. Now, I am Reformed, and as I said in a conversation with Dr. Sproul, historically speaking, there have only been three basic theologies, the Reformed, the Arminian, and the Liberal. The Liberal doesn't deserve even consideration. It is, it's pseudo-Christianity, it's not the real thing. So strictly speaking, in the whole history of the Christian Church, there are only those two theologies. As far as the Baptists are concerned, they are divided on that point. Some are Reformed, and with them I agree on their Reformed theology. Some Baptists are uh, Arminian, and I disagree with that Arminian type of uh, strain. But the 5% where we all dis we disagree until we come to see which one is an error on that point, because we both agree one of us is wrong. God does not talk out of both sides of his mouth. If he is teaching believers' baptism only, I am wrong. And if he is teaching a covenantal conception which calls for the Baptist, a baptism of children, then the Baptists are the ones who are doing the sinning. But that's our area of difference. But I'm trying to say it's a real area and so on. But it doesn't begin to compare with a vast area of definite agreement, even among evangelicals, not to mention those Baptists who are Reformed.